Thank you very much uh, for the uh, introduction, and once again, thank you for the uh, invitation and uh, inviting me to uh, speak. Um, this is a uh, Sigvaris uh, stocking. It's perfectly engineered. I can, I can stretch it, and it's got recoil. And these are the properties of tension. We've been conned by the manufacturers. It's a tension device. And the property of tension, there's a condition that's called tension-induced skin stress. And no matter how perfect the fit, you're very likely to get these lines that are present over here. And it's not a term I've made up. This is in been published just a couple of days ago, the condition of tension-induced skin stress, an international consensus statement. It's not really reported as a complication it's reversible, but it may represent the physical evidence of why compression devices may cause discomfort and irritation. When we increase, if the limb is susceptible, this uh, stress can start to cause red areas over fulcrum areas. And this is because of the law of Laplace. When the radius gets smaller, the pressure over that, get, over the areas, gets higher and lesions may develop. And the way we measure pressure with tension devices is using interface pressures. But we know this. This brings us on to tension-free compression. And one of the proponents of this is uh, Alfred Obermeyer and SAC theory. And it essentially states that we are sacs within sacs within sacs all suspended from our bones it's all, they're all hanging and an inner sac is weightless in comparison to the outer sac and this sac over here it's got three properties it has a weight a hydrostatic pressure which gets higher the further that you go down and that's evident because the lowest pinhole has the furthest reaching stream it's also got a tension around the side, which is dependent on the weight. And there's an interface pressure, which is the pressure outside the sac compared to inside the sac, and that obviously increases as you go down. And when the sac is immersed into water, some changes take place. The hydrostatic pressure remains the same. It's unaltered. But what happens to the membrane, it becomes tension-free. The interface pressure becomes zero. So the ideal interface pressure should be zero. And that's my leg on the left in water, acting like the water, because it's been relieved of tension by the surrounding swimming pool. We did a little project to investigate the effect of water compression on venous diameters and calf volume. This is the uh, underwater laboratory in Abana Terma, Padua. It's got tempered glass windows so you can see everything. Very carefully temperature controlled. And duplex ultrasound underwater is, is remarkable. You don't need any uh, jelly. Uh, the images are without artifact. So we designed an experiment standing in the water and out of the water. We measured superficial and deep venous diameters and volume slices using strain gauge plethysmography. And this is an example of the study design. In land, you can see a varicose vein in water. It tends to disappear. It's painless. And we measured the diameters. And there's the, on the far left, the strain gauge plethysmography. And these are our results. And at most of the venous stations, nearly all of them, in fact, there was a significant reduction in venous diameter. It's very difficult to compress veins on land when you're just standing. and You need high compression pressures even to start to overlize a vein. And that's painful. 
This is uh, remarkable results, is the ones on car volume. On the left, standing in water compared to out water, there was a 5% reduction in car volume, and that's quite significant. But after walking and exercising and using your calf muscle pump, there was no significant reduction in volume, which tells us that in water, our venous reservoir has gone and the calf muscle pump becomes redundant because there's nothing to pump, the reservoir's gone. So we concluded from this experiment that water significantly reduces the diameters of veins, and this is the first step in exploring the tension-free properties of water compression. And the aim is to develop a compression device that can exert very high pressures whilst remaining comfortable for the patient. And the trick is to separate the tension device, put that on the outside if you want to, but between the outside and the skin, there should be a tension-free area, like jerry, jer jelly, water, hyaluron, various uh, substances uh, can be used. And this is the future, we believe, of compression. So it is a game changer. It changes what we already know and think about compression. The ideal interface pressure is zero. Compression should be without tension. Venous tension is much more important than venous pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is not applicable in water. It is irrelevant. It's what's transmural pressure that's important. And the calf muscle pump is not applicable in water. Water is an anti-gravity machine. It may change how we can classify compression devices into tension devices and pure pressure devices. Then that's our team, and that's a picture of uh, Alfred Obermeyer after our, our many discussions.